Hi there, another meter provided by Kai Reads for review by me. I did not pay for it, so I mark it as a promotion, but from my previous reviews, you know that this doesn't stop me from sharing all my findings with you. Starting with this one, two fuses? I don't think so, but we'll find out. Let's see what we've got. A bag, containing obviously the meter in a pen type format, a single plug lead, some batteries, and a thin operation manual. This is the KWEED's website for the ST120. I think it's fair to say that this meter doesn't target electronics but has electrical work in mind. This is clear from the form factor as well as the phase sequence test function. It also tallies with the use cases shown in these images. What did I get? Well, exactly what they show here. Some assembly required for the AAA batteries apparently. A quick look at the specs. Rated for CAT3, work up to 600 volts, which is impressive. That would cover all domestic installations and some work on three-phase industrial plants and lighting circuits. Not setting the world on fire as far as accuracy is concerned, but certainly in line with what you would expect these days from a meter for electrical installations. It even has capacity, frequency and diode tests, probably because they come as freebies integrated into the chipset. Notably absent are any current ranges. It looks as if Kaiweeds has several pen meters, but if you look carefully, real meters are only the ST100 and ST120. I had a careful look comparing the ST100 with the ST120 because they cost practically the same and the ST100 has everything the ST120 has but adds NCV and a slightly more accurate capacity range. Why would anyone want the ST120 if you get more with the ST100? But then I realized that the nose of the ST100 is the NCV antenna and for everything else you have two leads plugged into the rear. In that case I think the ST120 with its test probe in the nose is clearly far more convenient to use, especially in situations like those shown here. The battery compartment is held by a screw, but similar to other Kaiweeds meters, opening is not easy. The cover is so tight with the body that lifting it without using what seems unreasonably force is impossible. The QC sticker that was thoughtfully placed on the dividing line between cover and body makes no difference. It is nice that there is a metal threaded insert for the screw, but I'd be more worried breaking the plastic cover in the process. After inserting the two AAA batteries, it springs immediately to life, which means there is no hard power on off switch. The display is actually very nice. It's permanently backlit and very easy to read in bright or dark environments. By default, you are in auto mode, which automatically selects AC and DC volts, resistance and continuity mode. On the left of the display are three LEDs, the top one is red and the other two are green. These serve as a rough signal level indicator in the live voltage test mode and the middle one is used as a visual indicator for continuity. Pressing the FUNK key allows manual selection, DC volts, AC volts, resistance, continuity, diode mode, frequency mode, capacitance mode, live voltage tester, three phase sequence tester. Short presses on the middle button toggles hold on or off, it's the usual dump hold that just freezes the display. A long press turns on the torch light in the nose which is supposed to help probing the right thing in a dark junction box for example, but I think it's a bit misaligned to just miss where the tip is actually pointing to. A quick look at the probes themselves. To comply with safety standards only about 4mm of the probe tips is normally exposed but the covers are removable for both probes, extending that to 20 mm. With just 70 cm or 2.3 feet, the cable of the black lead is too short for my liking. It has no markings and uses soft plastic material and, sadly in my opinion, loses a 90 degree angle connector. I know it makes technically no difference, but just look how much better the meter looks if you use a probe lead with a straight connector instead. Rather than going through boring sequences of measurements to confirm accuracy, I just discuss results and demonstrate a few interesting things. On the top here is DC volts accuracy. 
at generally 0.1%, it is well within the claimed 0.5%, at least up to 200 volts I tested. If you drop below 50 millivolts, the accuracy looks increasingly worse, but that's an effect of the limited resolution of the ST120. Measuring 10 millivolts and reading 9 is totally acceptable, but an error of 10%. It is interesting to see the note here from the specs. Measurable voltage 0.8 volts to 600 volts, when it clearly can do much better. The difference is that this statement is for the auto mode, but this graph was made selecting DC volts mode. I will demonstrate the effect of auto in a moment, but first to AC volts, which has the same statement. Again, for voltages above 1 volt, AC volts accuracy is much better than a claimed 0.8%. It was mostly better than 0.1%, but for voltages below 0.5 volts, the error quickly increases and for everything below 100 millivolts, the meter simply reads zero. This behavior is not simply a mathematical problem as for the DC volts, but rooted in the true RMS capability which comes at a price. The lowest range for this meter is 4 volts, and all true RMS meters usually state somewhere that the accuracy requires at least a signal of X percent of the range. X is usually being 10%. That would be 0.4 volts, and what you are seeing is what happens if you get below that. At 0.1 volts, or 2.5% of the range, either the true RMS circuitry fails completely, or the firmware prevents it from showing crazy numbers. To demonstrate the behavior at low DC voltages, I use this calibrator connected to the ST120. This calibrator can generate very accurate DC voltages or currents. The calibrator is producing a DC voltage of 300 millivolts, and when the meter is connected, its auto mode recognizes that as a resistance of just over 2 megohm. But if I switch manually to DC volt modes, it has no problem measuring 300 millivolts exactly. Per chance I found that 500 millivolts is a value where auto mode is stuck, not doing anything, but again, switching manually to DC volts shows the correct value. At 600 millivolts, auto mode does recognize the voltage and switch to DC volts itself. That's a bit better than the claimed 800 millivolts. Interestingly, the ST120 still remembers that you are in fact in auto mode. So when you lower the voltage, which I show somewhat accelerated, the meter switches back to resistance at below about 260 millivolts. Of course, it does not do that if you switch to DC volts earlier. A similar test for AC and with about 0.25 volts, the meter switches to ohms. But you can, of course, switch manually to AC volts and get the readings, although as discussed it isn't terribly accurate. At about 0.354 volts, auto mode is a bit uncertain first, but then recognizes AC volts. And slowly reducing the voltage switches back to ohms at about 0.25 volts. Before leaving volts alone, a quick test of mixed AC and DC signals. As shown on the Priman, the signal is about 1 volt DC with 3.5 volts AC on top. In auto mode, the ST120 always picks the highest signal and in this case showing the AC part. If I rise the DC part to just over 4 volts, it switches to DC. I can of course still select the AC part by selecting AC. Lowering the DC part again and the meter switches back to show AC. Selecting DC should show the DC part, but it's not very stable or accurate. In fact, all the measurements were not as good as you would expect. The ST120 has trouble with mixed DC and AC signals. Here the ST120 is in DC mode, measuring a constant 3.8 volts DC signal with half a volt of AC, which is enough to make the reading unstable. Increasing the AC part to 15 volts slowly shrinks the display DC values until the meter blinks confused zeros. The same test, but now the ST120 is in AC mode, measuring a constant AC voltage of about 3.8 volts added to 0.9 volts DC. Increasing the DC part makes the displayed AC shrink until it's just zero at 14 volts DC. This happens exactly the same way at higher voltages too, and it's not trivial if for example 38 volts are shown as zero. 
at least auto will show the higher voltage so you know not to touch it. For voltages you should therefore always start in auto and only use DC or AC if you know they are not mixed. Moving on, I measure the AC bandwidth using a 1 volt RMS signal. It is specified as 1 kHz and that is certainly true. The red 3dB line is crossed at 4 kHz. I use the same 1 volt RMS signal to test the frequency mode from 20 Hz onwards and it's well within the specification. In my test the highest frequency shown correctly was 17 MHz. As with all small multimeters, trying to measure frequencies it suffers from low resolution for higher values. Of note, these repeated dips to 0% error at 500, 5000, 50000 and so on. This is not because the meter is particularly accurate at these values. Actually, the opposite is true. This is a 4000 count meter, so the switch to the next higher range happens just after 4000. So anything 5 something is measured with reduced resolution. For example, 4000 Hz has a resolution of 1 Hz. So if it measured 4004 Hz instead of 4000, it would show 4004 and we can calculate an error of 0.1%. But if 5000 Hz is measured internally, equally bad as 5005, in the 40,000 range the meter only shows 05.00, dropping the last digit, that would reveal the error, and if you compare 5.00 kHz with 5000 Hz, the error is apparently 0%. This is not a problem of the ST120, all multimeters behave like that, there isn't really anything one can do about it, because we don't know what the internal values are. If anything, this enforces that with any multimeter, one should not put too much trust into values that are measured right at the beginning of a range. Let's have a look at resistance in auto mode, using my box of 0.1% reference values starting at 1 ohm. It goes into continuity, beeps and shows 0.0, .0 instead of 1. Not great. 10 ohms. It briefly shows 10.1 and then goes to 2.8, rising to 3.4. 100 ohm and now we are in resistance mode and the display value is ok. 1 kilo ohm, slightly low but in spec. The same for 10k. 100k, 1 meg and 10 meg. 100 meg is out of range, 40 meg is the maximum it can measure. I spent some time investigating the resistance mode. First of all, from 50 ohm upwards there is no problem regardless whether you are using auto or ohms. This is the right graph. As you can see, it's comfortably within 1% specification. Below 50 ohms there is a significant difference whether you use auto or ohms. Auto in this case means of course continuity with light and beep. This is the red line here. The error gets continuously worse and values of 4 ohms and lower are simply shown as zero. Things are not quite as bleak if you select resistance. The error is still ok, down to 10 ohms and only then starts to increase noticeably. This increase is concerning, but it isn't as bad as it looks. This graph shows the expected ohm values on the x-axis and the measured ones on the y-axis. Of course, ideally we want a straight line. Expected 10 ohms, measure 10 ohms. Expected 5 ohms, measure 5 ohms, and so on. The blue line is the behavior in ohms mode and it follows the straight line pretty well, with a few wobbles at low value. These are percent wise rather large errors but still quite usable. The two green lines represent the worst case of min and max allowed tolerances. Minus 1% minus 5 digits and plus 1% plus 5 digits. To be in spec, the measured value must lie in between the two green lines and in resistance mode there's no questions that they do. In auto or rather continuity mode, however, at 12 ohms, the meter is already hopelessly out of tolerance. The takeaway is that for the ST120, continuity is only good for that, namely if there's continuity or not, not for accurate measurements of resistance. For that, you have to switch the ST120 to resistance mode. To show what I mean, I repeat the test of low ohms but using resistance mode instead of auto. 1 ohm. settles on 0.5 ohms. 2.5 ohms shows as 1.9, 4.3 ohms shows as 3.4. That is certainly not great, but at least usable.
Testing for continuity responsiveness in auto mode is of course hopeless in a smart multimeter because of the time the meter takes to figure out what you are trying to do and then switch to continuity. For these kinds of tests, one really has to manually set continuity first. While this is somewhat better than auto mode, and I like that they use the middle green LED as a visual indicator, but there is no doubt that it is pretty bad as continuity response times go. However, I think the cheap steel probe is at least partly to blame, and while I can't replace the front, I can replace the black lead, in this case with a Bryman one with gold surface. That is so much better, so if you do lots of continuity tests, you should consider replacing the black lead with something decent. Caps mode generally works as usual, so I skip it here, but forget measuring capacitance below 10 nanofarads with any degree of accuracy, as this measurement of a 1 nanofarad capacitor shows. There are no surprises in diode mode. The ST120 does not give a beep in forward mode. It can measure two normal diodes in series and measure and light a red LED, but not two red LEDs in series. Measure and light a yellow LED, but does not light or measure a white LED. For a quick check of the detection of live voltages, I use this adapter to make accessing the UK power sockets easier, because they are normally closed by shutters when no plug is inserted. For this test, it is important not to plug the black lead into the ST120. First of all, it's a safety issue. You don't want to accidentally touch the black lead while the red one is in a live socket, because all that protects you is the meter's input resistors. The more practical reason is that even with a black lead just dangling loosely, the ST120 becomes way too sensitive and detects live voltages everywhere, even on neutral and on earth, rendering this function useless. I have to criticize the manual here, because while it says that the red probe is used for this test, it does not explicitly say to remove the black lead. Repeating the test with the black lead removed, it behaves properly and detects the live phase and only the live phase as it should. And speaking of phase, a unique function of the ST120 is that it offers phase sequence detection, but I don't have three phase power in my house. In the hope to trick the meter, I set up my function generator to provide a sine wave, which I can phase shift relative to a sync signal, which is the blue rectangular wave. This is 0 degrees, 120 degrees, to 40 degrees. Of course, this is very limited, since I can do only one phase at a time, but then the ST120 has only one probe tip and gives me one minute to do the whole sequence. So my plan is to quickly change phase in between samples. For a more realistic test, I boost that sine wave to 136 volts AC using the blue transformer and connect it one end to neutral or earth. Using live test, the ST120 is happy in identifying this. The phase is currently set to zero, so on with phase sequence test. The ST120 shows PA with a blinking A indicating it expects the first phase and now I have one minute to complete the whole sequence. With the first phase done, the A becomes steady and a blinking B appears. I now need to shift the phase by 120 degrees, but the ST120 does not recognize that. Shifting the phase a further 120 degrees, and it still does not recognize the new phase. After one minute, the display changes to PABC with P blinking to show that the test failed. Okay, also the phase sequence test is supposed to only use the red tip to probe, I decided to try connecting the black lead to my neutral as well, and also keep both connected at all time. Switching from live mode, which of course now beeps because of the continuous connection, to phase immediately recognizes the phase A and blinks waiting for B. Shifting the phase is recognized as B. Shifting the phase phase sequence completed successfully and shows L for a left-handed phase sequence, which is slightly strange since I expected it to be R for right-handed. But then I'm no expert in three phase systems. The upper diagram is what I tried to simulate, but of course only one phase at a time. The three phases shown in blue, red and yellow are each 120 degrees shifted from each other. 
so the phase sequence is kind of A, B, C, A, B and so on. I would have thought that to be right. By swapping the two phases you can reverse the direction which is shown in the lower diagram where the phase sequence is now C, B, A, C, B, A and so on which would be left in my book. The only other measurement device I have that can show phase sequence is my Fluke T110. Although it's hard to see, the black probe is actually labeled L1 and the red one L2. The tester has two arrow LEDs and according to the manual, if the black probe or L1 is connected to the first phase and the red one or L2 to the second phase, the right LED should light up and if the phases are swapped, the left one. The only problem is that the fluke tester needs 100 volts and two simultaneous phases for that test. Going all out, I rigged two amps to drive two transformers to produce 200 volts peak to peak each. The blue trace is the output of the blue transformer and the trigger reference, the yellow trace is the output of the other transformer. The other ends of the two transformers are connected to simulate a ground which is also used for the ground of the scope. The blue transformer represents L1 and the other L2. Connecting the fluke with the red probe at L1 and the black probe at L2 shows the left LED which would make sense. Unfortunately it still shows left when the probes are swapped which indicates that this setup is nonsense. I think the problem for both the fluke and the ST120 is that there isn't any phase reference for the meters to pick up in my crude test setup. The fluke manual explains that the T110 examines the two phase signals but picks a reference capacitively from you holding it in the hand. Obviously that reference isn't the tiny stuff coming from my test setup but rather the much larger general mains hum from all my equipment in the room. If the fluke gets confused in its phase sequence even when connected to two phases simultaneously it's no wonder that the ST120 with just one connection can't work it out either. And connecting the black lead of the ST120 to the transformer obviously isn't the same as a phase reference that stays the same when measuring a different phase. So without access to a real three phase system all I can say about the phase sequence mode of the ST120 is I demonstrated how it would look like and I think it probably works fine. Let's finish off by having a look inside the ST120. There are two screws on the front and the battery compartment hides the third screw. But just like the battery compartment lid, this thing is very difficult to pry apart. In the end I had to use a spudger. I do admire this elaborate internal frame to prevent the batteries from touching the PCB. There isn't all that much to see. The big black blob hides the brains of the meter. On the left is the spring for the negative end of the batteries. Soldered and glued. Let's hope the connection can stand the strain in the long term. Further towards the red end you can see the diode for the torch light and below that the two metal film resistors of 5 mega ohms in series for the input protection. On the right of the blob we have a couple of transistors, caps and resistors and further to the right towards the end just before the positive battery terminal something that looks like a DC to DC converter, possibly a boost converter to get the max 3 volts battery voltage to 3.3 volts for the chip. There are also holes for a 7 pin connector which I would guess is to load firmware and do calibration in the factory. I would have removed the PCB but it looks like if some desoldering may be needed at the tip so I decided to leave it. What we miss is the LCD and the buttons but there must also be a relay because you can hear it when changing from volts to ohm mode. I try to get some pictures of what was going on inside the tip. Apologies for the shaky camera work. There are some PTCs for protection. I counted two despite the silk screen saying three. Maybe the other one is on the other side. For sure there are no fuses but since this meter has no current range that is no problem. With the meter open, the battery terminals are accessible which gives the opportunity to measure current consumption. I roped in the Kaiweeds KM601 to show the battery voltage and the O1 in the pack shows the current. After an initial surge of more than 20 milliamps or so, the current settles on about 7.5 to 8 milliamps. You can also see the permanent backlight of the LCD. 8 milliamps is quite moderate and would give it a comfortable battery life with decent AA batteries. 
But then I remembered the DC to DC converter on the PCB, which will surely add some ripple current. So just to be sure, let's check the AC current draw. Wow, more than 13.5 mA AC current on top of the 7.7 mA DC. That makes 15.7 mA AC plus DC total using vector addition. The frequency of the converter is apparently about 2.3 kHz. And that frequency meant that the O1 with its 1 kHz AC bandwidth, same as the ST120 by the way, isn't the meter that can accurately measure that. Here's the same measurement with the Bryman 869S. DC current on the bottom, AC current on the top. It's more than 20 mA AC current and AC plus DC is about 22 mA. I do admit I only recognized that error when I was editing the video and I had to repeat the measurement with a Bryman. I left it in because it shows how important it is to know and remember the limits of your meter. Standby current is an interesting question with all meters that you can't fully turn off. In the ST120 case, it's less than 1 microamp, which is a very good value. How does the ST120 behave when the batteries run empty? Does it still show correct measurements? I set up a voltage of 4 volts for it to measure at its best resolution, while I lower the supply voltage in 100 millivolt increments. The low bat indicator came on when going below 2.55 volts, up to then it was measuring correctly. 2.3 volts and the readings are changing. 1.8 volts and the reading is way off and also the display is starting to flicker. And just below 1.5 volts the display is dark. This just confirms that with all multimeters you should change the batteries when the low battery symbol appears or your measurement accuracy may suffer. What to make of the ST120? First of all, a special thanks to KVEATS for sending me this meter, even though they know by now that I tend to find things and report both good and not so good results. The ST120 is clearly a meter for electrical work, not electronics, and for that work I like the form factor. It is comfortable to hold, very lightweight, the display is easy to read, even in the dark, and operation could not be easier. For most ranges the meter is better than the stated accuracy and more than good enough for the needs of electrical switchboards rather than the test bench. When measuring below 100 ohms in auto mode you have to decide whether you are more interested in continuity and beeps or the resistance value in silence and select the mode accordingly. For its intended use the problems in auto mode at very low DC and AC voltages are not that much of an issue and if needed you can manually switch to the right mode for low voltages, but beware of mixed AC and DC signals. I don't know how common mixed AC and DC voltages are in electrical installations. They are common enough in electronics, just think of ripple in power supplies, but the ST120 isn't intended for electronics. All I can say, if you have to deal with mixed AC plus DC, the ST120 is not for you. I think that kind of sums it up. If you worry about mixed AC and DC, stay away from the ST120, otherwise it's a nice and affordable tester that doesn't break the bank. I wanted to conclude with a practical test of using the ST120 in various situations and compare to two testers of similar form factor and target user group that I happen to own, but this video is already way too long. I will keep that shoot out for the next video, so don't forget to subscribe if you not have already and maybe consider becoming a Patreon that would really help this channel. The link is in the description. As Patreon you always get early access to videos, a blog and other exclusive content. Thanks for watching.